Yeah, hello everyone. <laughs> um, as you can see, um, this is basically, um, it's hard to count exactly actually, but we're definitely above 100. <laughs> so we actually wanted to celebrate that today. Um, yeah, I'm just inviting everyone here as well to subscribe to our event guide. Um, we are doing a lot of free events, a lot of free uh, lectures actually. And yeah, if you check our event guide page, there's a small subscribe button there. And we would of course love to see you all in our regular XR Pro open lectures. Um, yeah, there's lots of different topics and always industry professionals sharing their either their career pathways or their expertise, their lessons learned, etc. So we always um, are trying to find the most interesting topics for, for our community. Yeah, so let me just give you a very quick introduction to XR Bootcamp. Who are we? Well, we are teaching beginner level to intermediate to advanced level XR skills. And what's special about us is that we are handpicking our um, trainers, our master trainers, and our mentors. And we always make sure that you learn from people who know what they're doing, who are either working in their own successful XR studios, or they're working at big companies like Ubisoft, developing XR games or XR applications themselves. So you really learn from practitioners, from people who know what's currently required on the job market, and what's um, yeah industry standard, what's currently current industry standard. Um, so we're always updating our curricula with the most um, yeah, up-to-date skills. And um, yeah, so, so I'm also inviting you to join our XR Discord server, XR Creators Discord server. We have already over 5,500 enthusiasts and XR developers there. Um, you can exchange, you can network, you can help each other out with your XR questions, and it's definitely worth joining. Um, yeah, what else? Um, I just, uh, I don't want to go into detail about XR, our XR foundations and prototyping bootcamp. It is starting next week. If you haven't heard about it, I mean, feel free to uh, try our free C Sharp course. Um, that's always a great way to start to see if you like developing, if you like programming, um, because it is programming heavy, the bootcamp. Um, so you have to like it. And we love to um, recommend people to just try and to just um, yeah, get started with the free C Sharp course. Um, so that's basically the four months program. You have career services afterwards and you learn everything from C Sharp, from Unity um, to prototyping. And you have an amazing actually career portfolio, which you can showcase to recruiters afterwards. And um, yeah, there's a lot of different careers our students are having after the bootcamp. We have an amazing hiring rate. Um, and it's definitely the XR industry is growing and you can be confident to find a job after the bootcamp. Um, so we, I also like, yeah, recommend you to check our trust pilot uh, page where our graduates, where our alumni share their opinions about Exa Bootcamp. And we are really, really happy um, that it is very positive. <laughs> and we hope that it, of course, we are always working on ourselves and improving regularly to make sure that it stays that way. And for ex, um, especially um, you, I would love to actually share a few more details about our XR Design Fellowship. It's our most accessible program at this point um, because it's not that intensive that our intensive because you basically need to only invest um, like around 10 to 15 hours per month um, our boot camp is much more intense right the boot camp is around 30 hours per week 20 to 30 hours per week but here the fellowship it's only 10 to 15 hours per month um, that's why it's also much more accessible and you basically have always one monthly live case study um, with a top um, XR design professional who is sharing his skill sets and we are basically in a 12 months program um, building up your XR design skills and um, you also have the chance to basically improve with our mentors um, feedback you have like one mentorship one mentorship live session per month um, you also have the chance to improve your XR design portfolio and um, this was for example this is a July uh, module that's the first module um, and of course we have to talk about the um, Vision Pro and how to design and prototype for the Apple Vision Pro and you're invited to try that out as a first month and if you have any questions about that we are happy to answer also in the chat um, but for now I don't want to take more time <laughs> and would actually love to hear more about architecture um, and how to become an XR prototype afterwards thank you thank you Rahel uh, I would like to also uh, invite uh, first Alessio to stage 
he has already a huge background in terms of architecture but on top of that he has already gone through many different XR, uh, very important XR roles. Uh, what our program today will be quite interactive. So we want to even make it round table uh, with our um, graduates and uh, architect and design focused graduates joining us uh, after Alessio's presentation. So after this 10, 15 minutes of presentation of Alessio, we will uh, have a different perspective, Asta, who, just graduated from our program and got a very nice XR job. Uh, and then afterwards, hearing from her, uh, we will we will open the stage to the roundtable discussion and your questions. So it will be quite a feel a free format, like a comfortable style, like a podcast. Alessio is also organizing. So happy to answer any of your questions throughout this session. Stage is yours, Alessio. Can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect. Well, th first of all, thanks so much for having me. Every time, you know, I, I get invited. It's like, you know, honor to be here and just bring in some part of my experience. And I really hope that helps uh, someone that was in my same situation. They wanted to be curious about, you know, the field of XR uh, coming from more, or more of a design education, design-based education. So my, my story, um, um, pretty much I was, um, I always been interested in design. Uh, I actually, my very first um, uh, university school was uh, an art school in Italy. And uh, I started to do art school and I thought that um, it was lacking a lot of um, technicality. And I was like very, I felt very, you know, maybe too uncomfortable to have so much freedom in my assignments. So I felt like uh, I was like, I don't know where this is going to lead me. I think I need more, you know, discipline and more like program um, for finding a job eventually in the future. So for that reason, I switched to architecture and I started to do architecture at Politecnico on Milan in Italy. And uh, at that time, uh, parametric architecture was like the big thing and uh it's still partially it is but like at that time i feel like it was booming um a lot of projects from zadi uh morphosis uh really was uh was everything we would see in our classes and um so we we were very strong on grasshopper uh, rhino plus grasshopper and all of this stuff and uh and and you know like if you if you went through some period like that you you will understand that like, um, you know, Grasshopper is basically a, a, a visual scripting platform, uh, which has a lot of scripting. You can change uh, scripts, you can customize a lot, all of your design. And so that really made me understand that maybe we can, you know, maybe architecture is not, it's not just about like designing, but it's also about this kind of computer computational part that uh, really makes the difference uh, if we, you know, like if you are passionate about something like that, you really can make a project step up the game. So I did like an internship uh, in an architecture firm where they were super interested in parametric architecture and in, in, in learning that uh, I saw VR for the first time um, uh, as a way to visualize some very crazy geometry in 3D. Um, it was around 2014 and 15, so back in time. So not exactly the VR experiences that, that you have today, but something very like primitive comparing to what you know what we're expecting today. But um, it really got my attention. So I I thought that maybe going to a school where you know was more like architecture based on technology would have like got my attention a little more would make me more passionate about you know like uh, uh, what to do next in my career so I thought that SciArc would be like a good choice because they recommended me SciArc which is a uh, if, if you, I, I assume you know if you're in the architecture field but if you're you know if you never heard of it it's like a, an architecture school in, in LA uh, and it's very much like um, a little bit of a crazy school because it gives you a lot of freedom in exploring things that you probably would never explore in other more in traditional architecture school is very, you know, it's very anti-architecture in a way, but still an architecture school. 
Um, there are very interesting programs, uh, professors with a very interesting focus, and they try to push the boundaries of the design and technology. So there I've been really, um, that, that, that was the time for me to discover Unity uh, because uh, initially for a real need of um, rendering animations in a very short amount of time, uh, if you also, you know, you've been probably in architecture school or design school, you need to present constantly your projects and you need to go through a pipeline of work that, you know, implies that you need to like rendering spaces, you need to just create geometry and then rendering. And that takes so much time, especially if you use something like Rhino, Cinema 4D, Maya. So I thought that maybe with Unity, just taking a screenshot, um, like a series of screenshot of the, you know, like sort of animation, but more of, of, a, of a game style animation with architectural projects would have just like speeded up a lot my workflow um, because of the real time technology nature of, you know, game engines. So I was, I was really caught on that. And I was like, wow, this is, this is probably going to be how things are going to be done in the future. And, you know, I was not surprised that after some years I've seen, a lot of uh, enterprise bundle coming out from Unreal Engine, Unity. Now there is Unity Reflect, uh, there is Unreal Engine and something for architecture too. And so I that became my thing, that became my tool um, that I would just do all of my project with that. And uh, developing also very much interested, you know, just learning Unity, I think you learn a lot of other things because it's a mix of scripting, uh, importing geometry optimization. Um, it, there is a lot of depth, uh, you know, it, and, and the cool thing about that is that you can approach it as a very basic understanding and you can approach it as a very advanced understanding too. So you have like a lot of uh, room for improvement when you know those foundational concept of, the, um, of using it. And um, so I was like, yeah, this is probably the way I want to work and what I want to do in the future. And I really, uh try to put myself in situation of stress and and where i had to learn things uh and sometimes it was also very you know stressful and still it is because there is a lot to learn still but i was like i want to learn i want to i want to work for a game company just for the sake of seeing how how the pipeline of this game engine works like what what's how does this work in a very professional settings um so i went to some uh to some local game companies to do internships here in LA because there is a big entertainment scene. And uh, I really, really fell in love with just like the workflow and the fact that you could just like seeing spaces in 3D in like two seconds. Uh, and all that comes with it, you know, you can build things, you can publish application on your phone, you can deploy on through different platforms. Uh, and I created, in a way, my portfolio, which led me to the role uh, uh, that I that I am now. Um, so I think that, like, uh, I also don't want to just keep talking and, and just like you know talk, talk about myself. But I feel like if I were in your position and I would be interested in transitioning toward um, XR, really starts from I, I always preferred like a project based approach where I really struggle to understand what I wanted to do and how to do it. And sometimes that was a little bit outside of my required educations uh, at SciR because I have to say like a lot of the stuff that I'm working now, it's been really like passion project at the beginning. And then it became something that I was like, oh, okay, this could definitely be a product or can definitely be something that I can show as a prototype and then can go farther if I develop it farther. Um, so all of that kind of process uh, for me was super valuable and, um, and, and I was not expecting that XR would pick up this much in enterprise and architecture. I think I was at the right time, at the right moment. Um, I, I thought initially that maybe XR would have been something that it would manifest way more in gaming. Uh, and in so, some countries, I feel like it's like that because, you know, recently I've been to Japan and uh, I, I can see that they leave the XR revolution in a very different way than maybe here. Here we are approaching it in an enterprise way. Uh, initially here was gaming, but then it kind of fade a little bit away. It's still there, but 
I feel like now everyone is starting to create like solution to just confirm that this needs to stay. It doesn't need to leave. Uh, but in other, you know, in other places, they really don't care. They just go with entertainment a hundred percent. And um, I feel like also LA is like a city between these two opposites and uh, kind of give me that freedom of a little bit of creativity still. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, I want to stop and just give space to questions or just, you know, make it, make this more interactive as Ferran just pointed out before. And uh, please uh, let me know if there is any question or continuation of what I said. Yeah. If there's any burning question, we can take it now or we can hear from Asta's point of view and uh, we can start the round table discussion afterwards. Let us know if anyone has uh, some question. Please feel free to uh, ask on the Q&A oh, tab. See. Can you talk more about your current role? Yeah. I see a Q&A here. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, sure. So um, Magic Leap, I, I'm, I'm here working at Magic Leap almost since like um, uh, three years. Um, and if you want to see some sample project, um, let me see. So my website, I feel like, so my website is the is basically a portfolio of work that I use for applying to Magic Leap. So there is no secrets. Uh, it's everything in there and you will see all of what I did and it led me to my current position. Um, additionally to that, there is, you know, all a lot of architectural and design work I did previously, um, which is more like visual. Um, and so kind of like, I, I assume let them understand that there is, you know, two parts of me that is like the creative and visual side and the more like prototype and technical, which probably was the main point for them that they was like, okay, this could be like a useful asset for us. We need like a person that is very visual, but we need also that technicality that can interface designer to engineers. And, uh, and I feel like my, my, you know, from my education to now, my continuous, my continuous improvement is toward bonding these two extreme like whatever the designer thinks out of the box like things like creatively and whatever the engineer kind of imposed from a production level uh i'm definitely in the middle between these two figures and i really like this role because um it doesn't need to let me stick just to one part of my brain but it's just like constantly letting me dance above like uh between between these two extremes but uh, the, the current position I'm covering now is it's named prototype engineer. And um, I didn't even know that was a thing when I applied for the role. Um, uh, I thought it needed that prototype engineer was something regarding like, uh, like 3D models, uh, like literal physical things like prototyping, like mechanical stuff. But then turns out that now they call it that way for uh, because they really there is this workflow that is probably extended to a lot of different XR companies where there is a creation of a concept and then there is a conceptualization and uh, kind of like a prototype of it and then it goes into a production mode. Uh, so this this is something pre pretty common and really saves a lot of time because um, uh, doing a proof of concept uh, can lead to two different outcomes. The first one is like, oh, let's just not, let's disregard it because we kind of understood that this is not valuable enough. Or the second one is like, oh no, let's keep working on it and putting and, and making it and, and let it become to a state that is ready to be productionized. And often when we have ideas that are uh, successful, uh, these prototypes almost become like real products. Um, and, and, and it's easy for engineers to, to take them and do something because there is a very high fidelity reference that they, can, uh, that they can translate. It's not just like to say, oh, can we do this? And then you know, there is a pushback or you know, something like, no, you just show them uh, really what, what you mean and it works. And they, they are almost challenged to, by, by your creation. So that's that's kind of the role that I'm I'm in it now. Like uh, Magic Leap is like um, you know a kind of a pioneer company of XR, and I really wanted to work for them also for for kind of understand more about the world of XR and not always being at, in the side of the consumer of developer, but I really wanted to be on the part of 
you know, who, whoever made the OS for these AR system, what, what, they, what do they actually do? I want to understand, like, uh, how, how do you come up with, with those part with this headset? How does it work? And it's the complexity in this project is, is enormous. And uh, I still struggle to grasp <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of it. And every day for me, it's like definitely, even if I've been here for three years, every time it's like something new. Uh, that they get to work on and uh, definitely like a, a lot of growth uh, in this in this past this past years yeah perfect perfect uh, we have actually one more question but I I really would like to hear a little bit more from Asta's perspective which I'm sure that most of the people will relate more because uh, Asta is uh, really fr uh, freshly going towards XR for the last couple of uh, months and uh, maybe I would say one year uh, whenever she graduated last year actually uh, we were already confident that she will find nice opportunities so stage is yours Asta we would love to hear uh, from your perspective how how did it go is it going smoothly from architect to uh, XR any struggles or what are the tips that you can share with us Thank you for all. And uh, my name is Asta, and I'm based in Los Angeles. Um, so I have a background in architecture, design, and technology. I was working as an architect back in India till 2021. Um, four years in the architecture industry, working with boutique architectural firms, and then I decided to come here for to the US for my master's. I also went to the same school as LSU, SciArc. Uh, where yeah it was very experimental and um, I did this course for masters in science and architectural technologies uh, where we were focusing on uh, contemporary and new future design technologies um, investigating uh, these developing innovations in platform applications and game engines machine vision AI and a lot of computational design generative design um, and half through, um, halfway through the program, I realized I was really interested in exploring AR and VR tech because I found that was an amalgamation of, you know, uh, all the things that I was learning with game engines and AI, generative design. So yeah, I reached out to LSEO. I went to conferences. I met Farhan. I met all the people in the industry. Um, and then I decided to uh, join the boot camp, uh, which was this really rigorous uh, five month program uh, where they taught me how to come up with real world concepts and problems, solving real world problems, um, you know, scoping out projects, defining core features of a prototype, and then developing it, and then also pitching it uh, to clients. Um, yeah, and after that, since then, since the bootcamp, I've been working with um, as a VR developer with Museum of Science Fiction, uh, developing their core museum uh, features uh, for the VR museum. And then uh, recently, it's been three months since I started working full time as an AR developer uh, with this creative branding agency. It's called r, &R Partners. And yeah, I'm... Um, making social media um, experiences to engage audiences with brands and it's been really fun perfect yeah. perfect uh, i actually actually have a burning question which i think we can always go back to uh, that question as well uh, time to time throughout this session i have met with so many architects uh, helping their uh, career paths, etc. I think you guys have some kind of like a superpower or something. I don't know what. I don't know how. I don't know what makes you like. You guys are almost like born to 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 take over this kind of cutting edge XR, especially XR stuff. Are you believing on that? Is it a myth, or are you enjoying this superpower? Can you share a little bit about what makes architects or I would also call it product designers uh, and maybe 3D designers into that uh, uh, maybe description but I'd love to hear more like are you feeling like the same way uh, why you guys look like quite advantageous while you are uh, attempting to enter XR 
think, would like to answer? Yeah, um, like first thing that we, you know, really learn in architecture is like imagination and creative thinking, which also really helps in creating these uh, prototypes. Um, you know, how to turn abstract ideas into solid and tangible prototypes is something maybe which uh, we come with a superpower. And then also, I guess, 3D skills, world building skills. Um, if you're into computational architecture and you quickly, you know, sometimes you can learn how to look at graphics and CGI as, you know, programs, uh, you know, and that really helps. Um, yeah, and then I think we have superior communication skills as well. So, uh, you know, presentation skills and we can quickly turn our ideas into, um, again, representations. Um, uh, yeah, those are some superpowers I think I came with. Alessio, any comment on your side? Uh, I, I, I like to keep it very real for, you know, listeners, because I feel like, uh, if I were in that position, I would really want to know like the you know nuts and bolts of any anything regarding this. I feel like architecture school has it's like a double-edged sword. It's like a very amazing experience where uh, at least what it's been for me is been like a lot of um, had a lot of time to focus on what I wanted to learn. Uh, at the same time, our, the architecture field has a lot of issues uh, and. Uh, being, for example, two years at Morphosis, uh, where I even there had like a lot of freedom in, in using AR and VR, I felt like the way we were using it was not really um, efficient. Uh, I felt like the, the fact that there is this obsession to the presentation of your material rather than uh, improving processes in architecture is uh, is the reason why maybe the profession of architecture is uh, where is at the state that is today, like uh, it cannot keep up maybe with other fields. Um, the fact that processes are really secondary and presentation is first. I feel like this is uh, unfortunately something that uh, I wish it could change, but there is, I think there is a lot of change happening uh, across the, 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 the profession now. And, and I also saw this at school, I, um, uh, how, you know, how you've been taught and how you do things. It's really, sometimes you really don't have time to learn and you just have to constantly present. And it's like being an influencer almost, like constantly content creation. Uh, and it really stresses you out because uh, you need to be always on top of your uh kind of like you know you need to kind of uh but but that that's also the you know like that's very important too because what what architects goes through is like competitions and uh and they need to make a project that everyone likes and everyone wants so there is also that kind of part of the work to decide you need to create an object of desire and even in tech that's important too because when you create a product you need to be able to transmit that message and let people be engage with what you create. So that balance probably is what uh, is the most challenging thing. And I feel like architect, architects are so much trained to have this kind of like, you know, soft skill and hard skill at the same time. And uh, usually education just focus on one of them. So maybe that's, that's where the superpower comes from. Very interesting point, very interesting point. Uh, since we are half of the session, I just want to invite a few people uh, from architect background. Uh, of course, anyone available, uh, feel free to also chime in as well. But as far as the people that I know that they are very successful XR um, experts having architect background. So I will share, uh, I will give them the right to join. So let's wait for a few seconds i will also invite a few of our um, graduates so they can chime in and share their experience um, so i also would like to invite net i think net has an interesting question maybe net can uh, directly share here with us he can hear us 
you can hear us and uh, what else i'm checking anyone else okay i mean if anyone wants to chime in feel free to uh, uh just raise your hand Gandepun, i think yeah perfect great so uh we can anyone else that i forget okay perfect so uh who wants to ask questions or share their perspective on the architect see a lot of familiar name in the in the q a yeah true. we can we can we can also talk about that as well especially i i'm curious about this net and nets uh, nets uh, question because this is very important you know like okay i would like to break into this industry uh to xr uh i'm a junior person or i'm just graduating from an architect school what should i do right so uh but i'd love to hear more from net because are you meaning like uh seniority on the architect field or are you meaning uh, are, uh like a general industry seniority or xr seniority uh, what do you mean by seniority there i think that's because it's, the answer may change from one to another if you can hear us, Net, we cannot hear you. Uh, maybe you can prepare your microphone. And um, so maybe I can I can uh, ask uh, from my perspective. Hello? So yeah, perfect. Net, okay, would you great. like to yeah. would you like yeah, to sure. explain your question? Because um, it's a very yeah, sure. very nice question. Yeah, thank you so much, Ferhan, and uh, everyone like uh, today for having this great session. Well, uh, my question basically is about like you know I just shifted my career from you know a uh, game game uh, uh, lighting and rendering industry towards the gaming field, which uh, which was my passion. So then I took uh, an intro to gaming design and worked worked on that for like you know. Uh, um uh, like six months now and then i joined a startup company as an xr designer and then i'm working you know on the unity uh and c sharp learning and like improving my skills so basically i would be an intern and junior in the field uh mostly for even for the junior roles that are in the industry and i am applying for them uh, they mostly require very high level expectations. And uh, even though I asked for some, uh, you know, like uh, recommendations on how I can, uh, you know, improve my portfolio, I didn't get very concrete, uh, you know, uh, answer for how this improvement can can happen uh, it's just that yeah we are looking for someone with like more than three years of uh, experience in the industry though the you know I, I not that I am applying for senior level I am applying for junior positions but still it I don't know the expectations seem not to meet uh, a junior level or an in internship that could turn into a junior um, so yeah that's basically my question that how can I really improve and showcase that I am, you know, I am actively working and uh, I can just pick up uh, the new, you know, stuff that is going, uh, evolving in the space. Uh, I can, I can start tackling this one because I feel like I have a lot of points that maybe you, you could find insightful. So first of all, I didn't come out of school and went to work, for example, for Magic Leap. I actually worked two years at Morphosis, two plus years at Morphosis. I started as an intern and my internship was nine months. <laughs> so I, and uh, meanwhile, I, I had to do all of my visa stuff uh, that really, I think the, the O1 visa really pushed me to do a lot of more work outside of work. Um, because I was constantly in need of uh, visibility uh, for conferences, for, you know, extra work, uh, uh, winning prizes, applying for, a comp like, it was just a mess, uh, but, you know, kind of like created a portfolio, a body of work that, that was impressive after like two or three years. Uh, I had uh, actually a similar issue after, you know, after I finished SciArc, 
I was like, oh my gosh, I feel, you know, I feel great. I can do a lot of stuff. I can, I can use Rhino, I can use Maya, I can use Unity. I can, I can use any sort of software. I can definitely land like a junior position in some of these tech companies in for XR. And instead, because the nature of my portfolio was very architectural, I really have a hard time to connect with them. Uh, they would be very interested in hearing what I had to say, but then after one or two stages of the interviews, uh, they would just, you know, they were like, well, maybe we we're looking for something else. And I was like, so what? <laughs> so, uh, you know, like, uh, I feel like I, I went through kind of the same moment. And I also hear a lot of people, um, a lot of my friends, they're looking for jobs and they're like, we want to be like a junior position. But then when we apply, they are asking for a very extended body of work, which kind of represents, uh, you know, five years in the industry almost. So my recommendation uh, it's taking time to build your portfolio, which I did. Uh, I spent like really more than six months in creating projects, uh, which I engage client on my own, almost as a freelancer, sometimes without asking for getting paid. And I was like, okay, my intention here is really do something cool and getting exposure and do something that you can you know, you have it there and can be on an app store or can just unlock something very powerful. For example, one of the main projects I worked on was for a friend that was raising funds for um, architecture for, because he, he created like an ADU startup. So he was creating these little houses and he was like, we need to pitch to investors. And I was like, why don't you do an AR app? Uh, no one is doing it it would definitely catch attention of the investors and would make you look great comparing to, you know, your, your competition, maybe, you know, like I just assume it's a new technology, maybe it's cool for people. And uh, it turns out that was one of my biggest projects uh, as a solo, you know, no school, no bootcamp, like literally after work, I would put myself there and try to create like an app that I publish on Apple store, uh, Android store and that uh, ended up uh, letting him uh, uh, raise funds. So from, you know, you, you, you just create a product and that product was a very high impact. And at the same time, uh, uh, AR and VR was switching on enterprise. Uh, Plaza was working at Morphosis and doing very similar work that would, uh, you know, kind of like always try to get the attention of clients. So uh, that kind of mix made, made, made my portfolio being, I assume, interesting. Uh, so uh, that, that was kind of like the way I would frame it. Sometimes you really don't need to wait for other people to, um, to give you projects, but you really need to engage them and see what's the opportunity. For example, um, and I'm not saying this is easy. Like, you know, I'm not saying this is the answer to your question. I know that is a process that sometimes there are things to go right and sometimes there are things to go wrong. Uh, but I also created a podcast for this reason. So if you want to join it and, uh, and talk more, I mean, we can, we can talk through. Um, for example, now something that I see a lot uh, is, you know, AI uh, application in computer vision and machine vision and AR. Uh, that if I were a student out of school, that's probably what I would be, uh, you know, hitting the most. I was really, I would really do a lot of demos, uh, uh, and I tried to do that for a presentation that I showed in Tokyo, and I tried to embed like stable diffusion uh, with AR and bringing it on the phone. That was a hell of a project because you know it's just two or three things to do, but. Uh, you know, just doing it in the way you want to do it that looks good is like, a, you know, everything just detailed and, and useful it took me actually a lot of time. And then, and in making that, it kind of, I kind of created and documented all of my process. And this might be something that maybe comes out in the future and is helpful for me to, to just review uh, or I learn something more. Uh, so all of uh, that's, that's how I would approach it most of the time. One additional comment that I can also give based on the experience while we are placing our graduates. Actually, you have two chance, uh, Net. Either you will actually have these three years of experience as in the way that Alessio mentioned, maybe sometimes three internships or nine months uh, apprenticeships 
or uh, like working on something uh, to uh, on a project so you can show this as a reference or you will build portfolio that looks like you have three years of experience even though you have three months of experience that's that's two ways of course the second way requires a little bit of supervision and everything so that's the thing that we are trying to achieve here as well so how we can make your portfolio create a portfolio together that your portfolio look like you have multiple years of experience right that's the idea but you can only do that in a collective way right it is while self-learning uh, while self-prototyping it's not easy if it's your uh, like if you are really uh, new to the xr uh, development and design it's not easy to 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 uh, fast track your skills in a short period of time right i'm always telling this to our um, our uh, students as well guys you have only two options either you will be here with us you will have a very intensive four months with us or you have two three years of self-learning or uh, joining uh, your maybe different internships etc that you can build that slowly so both can work both can lead you to the job that you were looking for net but still uh, it requires at the end again at some kind of like a track record that i can see that okay this this person has some like a decent uh, experience and knowledge and it clearly shows through the project right that's the idea uh perfect so we have quite a bit of questions or comments i don't know emre do you have any comment on this or question uh, uh actually i have some questions by the way thank you so much for uh, doing this farhan i think it's uh so helpful for professionals like us i'm also coming from architectural background and last three years uh, I've been investing on these uh, XR skills. Uh, my question is related with, uh, uh, with the positioning yourself as an uh, architect in this field, right? So there are, it seems like there are some uh, positions in this XR uh, jobs. Uh, rather, uh, they are looking for some generalists, uh, people, who can wear too many hats, or sometimes uh, because of our uh, world building skills, uh, architects uh, ended up uh, with uh, only dealing with the 3D uh, asset creation or uh, creating 3D uh, worlds or uh, working as a technical art artist. My question is related with these positions, like, how uh how we can position ourselves like or what what uh which skills are uh can be transferable uh to this field from architecture very nice question i really recommend that let's spend five to ten minutes for the answering this question i would love to hear alessio or anyone else this is a very actually uh, interesting question that probably everyone is curious about Um, so in terms of transferring skills, I feel like, I mean, uh, I'm going to be a little edgy, but it gives you like, I give you like my personal perspective, you know, not everyone can, can fully agree with it, but I feel like the designer, the new designer, the new designer of the new century knows how to code. And, uh, this might be something that not a lot of people agree on. Uh, but I feel like there is a foundational of or computer science, which is too much embedded in design and needs to be taught in school more. And I hope that it's hard bootcamp, you know, uh, help that process because um, it's it's unavoidable that after, you know, some architecture, uh, like you cannot like study for almost seven years and be a generalist in architecture. I think that's a failure of the, the education system. If you if you are a generalist after so much time, like, I feel like your master and all of your, all of like whatever the school is kind of trying to give you needs to, needs to like uh, provide you the right space to find yourself a focus. And then if you're, if you know more than that, that's always a plus because being a generalist is not a bad thing because it lets you think very like, uh, you know, like a lot of, in a lot of direction, which makes you stand out if you focus on one problem. Uh, uh, 
instead i feel like uh at least my education has been sometimes that was like okay so we are doing the studio but what am i bringing home from here like am i just you know accomplishing the vision of the professor or i'm you know, trying to uh, step up my skills, understanding more and coming out from this that I feel stronger. Like that's that's a sensation that I wanted to have after every studio. And sometimes it's very difficult because some, uh, some professor I found was very focused on, on problems that, uh, you know, like being frankly, I was not interested in. And I feel like this is a common uh, between a lot of students. So uh, I think that the best way to start this is really like a project-based approach which also let you understand a little bit more about yourself. Uh, if, you need to for, if you need to pick a project, what project would you choose? You know, like that's a, that's a great question because uh, it makes you understand like a little bit more about yourself. Sometimes I pick some side projects and then I let, it, I let them go after two or three months and I'm like, that was a mistake. Um, and, uh, and I feel like I discover a little bit more about myself and what I like and what I like to concentrate and improve my energy on. Uh, so in my case, like talking really like objectively, uh, the skill that helped me to enter the role was the use of Unity, uh, because we mostly use Unity. Uh, without that one, even if I were a great designer, I don't think they would have hired me, to be fair with you. So uh, there is, a, uh, but between all of these people that can use Unity, they choose me because I also have this kind of architecture, what Ferran called superpower, which I like, <laughs> but you know, uh, that, that I think that the generalist is your way to stand out, but then you have to have a core skill, which is the one that kind of let you step, kind of let you enter the, 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 the challenge, you know, just like a minimum. And, uh, and then if you're an amazing designer, that's, you know, you're going to shine and you're going to, and you're going to have all of your skill that are going to run on top of your technical knowledge. So this is, I feel like how I see things. Exactly, exactly. I mean, um, let's imagine for a second, we have zero skills on anything, right? Zero skills. We are learning Unity and we are somehow like a VR prototyping. And then we have some portfolio, right? So this is one superpower. But uh, what we are always communicating on the uh, like people when we are career mentorship as well, if you have already subject matter expertise on think like architecture, which is another superpower. And on top of that, you have XR prototyping skills. I think you have way more advantage to shine as Alessio mentioned, because when you combine this and this combination shines to your towards your portfolio, Actually, this is the part that even three years of experience requirement will not matter anymore because they will see that, okay, as I completely agree with Alessio, so seven years of uh, maybe master and undergrad uh, architecture knowledge will shine much, much better if you have XR prototyping skill. But think of this unity and uh, prototyping knowledge as one, as a digit one, and then you are adding these zeros into your, uh, like, let's say, valuation, let's say, okay? So without this one, it is impossible, almost impossible to find a job because you still need to, they want you to realize your skills, right? Um, by yourself, without, you need another developer or prototyper, right? So when you have this one digit, you can add as many zero as possible which is each one of them are superpowers. And then this is your valuation, right? So this is uh, what we are always telling. There are many designers coming to us and we are also telling them, you need to know at least enough scripting and unity uh, knowledge so you can shine on top of your subject matter expertise. So uh, anyone who would like to comment on this because we may need to go to another question, but I would love to hear any experience or any comment on specifically this, who haven't talked, maybe uh, who would like to talk? Can Anyone? I just can I yeah. just uh, tell something? Yeah, so uh, you know, uh, uh, any reality, like whether it's conventional reality or augmented reality or you know virtual reality, has two essential elements, right? Space and time. 
So uh, special design skills uh, are will always be beneficial to operate in this other realities too. So uh, whether you are an architect or interior designer or not, I think it is important to have some sort of knowledge base uh, around special design uh, to survive in this, uh, you know, uh, environment. Uh, perfect perfect uh, i have actually a little bit technical question uh to anyone here especially maybe we can even uh take the answer from our recent graduates uh pass through is now quite i would say uh popular especially among vr headset uh portfolio projects our students also love so what do you think of pass through do you think that this can be a very interesting um I would say like a new era for especially VR experiences that architects can show their um, background knowledge about spatial awareness, as Emre mentioned, in a much better way. What is your opinion about pass through? Is this for us though? Um, I can answer this. Um... So yeah, I started developing pass through projects and I felt like um, it was more closer to what I wanted to do coming out of architecture to be actually, you know, interfacing digital elements onto the physical world. So definitely uh, pass through was an uh, important feature for me to learn. And um, yeah, there's so many, like the work that I'm doing now as an augmented reality developer, um, creating, uh, you know, uh, experiences on Snapchat and TikTok. Uh, also, um, learning past through, you learn about, you know, how the computer sees the world and you start learning about um, how to interact, you know, with the real world elements. So that's also something that uh, was helpful for me in this job. Any other comments or feedback on this? Um, so, sorry, go ahead. So I'm assuming pass through is a alternative to Unity. And uh, no, uh, who would like to explain pass through? I will show something in the meantime, and someone can narrate as well. Who would like to explain? I can. I can take a shot at. Oh, no, go, go ahead, Alicia. Please go, Steve. Go, go, Steve. Okay. You didn't talk today. Yeah. All right. So I just, I'm a recent graduate of the XR Bootcamp course. Um, I, I have an architecture background, but I haven't, I didn't practice architecture and spent my years working in working software in development for architects. Um, pass through, if you think about um, AR uh, applications where you see the world around you and then um, digital elements are overlaid on that, they're, on that, there's two ways to accomplish that. One is that like a Microsoft HoloLens where you see through the lens, you're actually seeing the world, but there's um, something virtual that's projected onto that space. Pass-through is when you, you're not really seeing through, but there are cameras on the outside of your VR headset that are capturing the outside world and then showing that to you. So you, you're still seeing the world around you with virtual elements uh, projected on top of that, but you're seeing it just like you're seeing, it's almost like a TV screen you're not really, it's not a window, it's a TV screen, and yet you're seeing the world around you like in the pictures here. So pass-through accomplishes the same thing as kind of a see-through, like a HoloLens approach. Um, and and the, the new Apple Vision Pro has a really high quality pass-through experience. So it would be perhaps maybe not indistinguishable, but close to indistinguishable from seeing um, the world visually, but seeing it through a screen. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, Imp implementation as opposed to an actual application. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's like a almost like a feature, and actually, companies like Meta and other VR headset providers have passed through SDK uh, that you can actually utilize this. Uh, there is actually one example uh, that one of our experts uh, you uh, actually built. So literally. The reason that I show this to you actually, uh, there's a wall in your tiny room, but you are actually becoming a neighbor with your remote friend, and then you can share experiences and even 
here some objects in between. So think of you become immediately like a, a neighbor uh, and you are hearing a wall be between uh, two people, even though their rooms are kilometers or miles away from each other, right? So uh, this is one of the first cutting edge stuff that we are really pushing the boundaries. Uh, I think it's very interesting from architect perspective, right? So what if we will have rooms which are so distant from each other, but we are somehow combining that at least virtually uh, in a, from interior design perspective as well. Any, any further comments on this? Well, I just want to reemphasize that for, for the purposes of um, um, architectural use cases of XR, which is not, you know, we're this discussion here is much broader than that, but for the purposes of architectural use cases, um, MR and AR applications are the, the most, um, make the most sense in a lot of cases where you, you've got, um, you're seeing the real world around you and then the, the building in front of you, either the building or if you walk into the space, then you can look kind of out the window and see the real world outside of there. Um, much more applicable than a full virtual reality experience where everything is virtual. Um, it, just, just my opinion, I suppose. Uh, there are also some other uh, interesting opportunities uh, combining these technologies with other emergent technologies as well. So uh, Internet of Things and spatial computing is uh, also uh, a great way to utilize mixed reality and augmented reality. I, I shared some of the interesting examples on the chat so you can uh, take a look at it. So. Uh, the built environment is going to be enhanced with the combination of these technologies in the near future. Yeah, I saw those links. Thank you. Checking those I mean, out. It's a very nice uh, exchange of ideas and perspectives. Thanks, everyone, for joining. I think we can maybe extend it 10, 15 more minutes. If there are, I think it looks like there are a few more questions. Zahid, uh, would you like to chime in? Any questions, any comments? Um, yeah, I actually just, uh, I asked it in like the chat, um, but it was uh, it was for Alessio, because um, you're at, you're at Magic, Leap, Magic Leap, and um, I came in a little bit late, so I didn't get the full intro, but I, I tried to dive in and at least understand as much as I could in the meantime. But um, for like Apple and then Magic Leap and all the hardware providers, I'm wondering like, are they typically hiring developers internally to develop projects for their systems? Or are they usually like, you know, um, like what's sort of like the, I guess, I don't know how to put this, but like what's the, the typical understanding when it comes to like hiring internally for developers or like emphasizing developers outside of um, their systems? And then as a follow-up, kind of what would be the difference between the two? Because I know that, they, that I, all these companies are hiring um, developers um, in some sense, but, I don't really understand like what the difference is between the two, if that makes sense. So regarding Apple, I don't know. <laughs> 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 uh, regarding Magic Leap, though, uh, there is a there is a program called um, uh, Developer Program, which you can subscribe and you can be part of this uh, kind of like guided process for. Mm. Uh, for building apps, which I find it very insightful because uh, I actually onboarded a lot of uh, people that were very interested to know more. And uh, mm -hmm. some of their apps is being also showcased in some of the conferences that Magic Leap has been part of. Uh, but yeah, that's... Oh, that's, okay. Yeah. And then are you, are you typically like building out at this point? Like, are you building out? I mean, you're prototyping, I guess, internally. So are you building out like apps within their system or are you more so in charge of of onboarding other developers not necessarily like they're not working at magic leap right typically they're mostly building apps for the platform I've never, i haven't used magic leap myself um i'm fairly new to i usually i've used the quest and i've done some like swift projects like on the small end of things so i've developed on apple's sdks but um yeah, sorry. 
<laughs> no worries. No, no, no worries. Uh, you know, when you ask like what things about when the fact is that when you work for you know under NDA, you can't really say much. Uh, and I don't want to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, I work. I do prototypes for a lot of different things. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Perfect. Uh, Onkar is with us. He's like uh, Asta, also recent graduates. And maybe Onkar, would you like to quickly tell about uh, your story because it's quite fresh as well? Uh, sure. Thank you, Farhan, for uh, just also poking me because I just got out of a work meeting. Sorry about late. But uh, yeah, I think uh, almost like six, seven months ago, graduating from XRP through grad school was a great experience. Very very consuming but i'll say very uh productive in in all ways and i also had a chance to speak with alessio about his experience uh going uh from architecture into uh xr2 so my current role is uh is more is in a more traditional architecture firm but it looks at uh more streamlining in xr applications into more Autodesk uh, level designs mainly. So I look into two types is uh, mainly taking Autodesk applications to XR using some existing platforms and also using in more block prototyping using some of the other softwares that uh, we have used at XRP and some, some of the other platforms that are available too. So it is, a great experience to be honest uh still being in architecture per se still having some touch for actually creating construction documents but having an equal opportunity to use the uh skills learned at xrp and uh trying to apply it there so yeah so thank you very thank much you for and the entire thank XRP. you for 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 also uh matching us with alessio it was i think it's a very nice opportunity to exchange uh, how about awesome. you, Ambika? Would you like to quickly uh, introduce yourself? If you have, if you can hear us. Yeah, I can. Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Ambika. And uh, I hope you guys can hear me. Yes, perfect. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Farhan, and uh, for um, inviting me to this event. And I always like to attend most of the events because they're very, very informative. Um, and like, yeah, so. I studied uh, like the same batch as Omkar and uh, traditionally I'm a product designer and I have some experience in architecture in terms of designing spaces for children and designing spaces for uh, interiors and things like that. So I have more, I come from more from a 3D background. So I have understanding of how things work, how you design a product or you know, and things like that. And I've always been very intrigued by technology. And I wanted to study about and learn how to build applications in virtual reality. I didn't have much of code experience, but I really got interested. And uh, if, when I joined XR Bootcamp, I had the opportunity to take up the coding course as well. And I did that and uh, yeah, so, how, how is the job hunting anything you can give us a tip or advice in terms of job hunting and yeah, how so, headhunters found you is it because of the portfolio is it an organic yeah. process or are you applying for lots of jobs i mean of course we were part of this career uh, journey but for the people yeah. who would like to hear more is it easy to break into xr after having a portfolio nice portfolio yes i will tell you this hands down a good portfolio is a representation of who you are and the fact that you actually know what you're doing because when, an, to be honest, it's such a new field that when an employer sends out a career, like, you know, they send out somebody to hunt for an XR developer, they really don't know what they're looking for. So one thing, you, sh you really need to have the right jargon that you know your stuff. So you definitely need to know what XR is. You definitely need to know what, uh, mixed reality is you definitely so these things you know technical understanding of uh, you know, uh, what uh, what you really are doing and it'll really help you in interviews 
But to get to an interview, you really need a good portfolio. And Exam Bootcamp really helped me in that area. Uh, so I work, uh, I currently work for Jaguar Land Rover and I have, I'm really fond of cars. So I did develop uh, a virtual showroom environment. So that I think definitely got me into the company. I think that was a good showcase because I now work in the XR side with the car company. And uh, yeah, so definitely whatever you're doing, keep posting it on your LinkedIn. Keep a really good portfolio and uh, reach out to people in your circle. See who's... And my second approach was to look at uh, companies that I really want to work for and their career website and keep on top of, you know, if there's anything coming up that you like. Say, if you want to work for Accenture, look at the career website, try to connect to people who are working in, with Accenture in this area in XR, as an XR developer or they're working in spatial computing and things like that. It, it'll really help you to if your end goal is to land a job. It might not be identical to what you want to do, but sometimes that first step of getting into this kind of a role will help you to actually build that backing that, yeah, you're definitely keen in this area and you want to actually showcase and uh, your skills through portfolio and to be hired by your chosen company. I wanted Maybe to you can also share your LinkedIn. Go ahead. I wanted Asta. to add that most of the employers I spoke to, they were very thoughtful in wanting to understand what kind of problems I was interested in solving. So even in the boot camp, I did like a couple of MVP projects, a lot of prototypes, but what I really put in my portfolio were the projects that showcased, you know, the kind of interests that I have and the problems that I wanted to solve. And then that led to like really great conversations, you know, during my interviews and ultimately led me to be ha being hired because my projects were more about social, uh, bringing people together, about personal experiences. And that's the kind of job that I got. Think of from this perspective, you are a hiring manager, okay? You, you need to make an empathy, right? If hiring manager is trying to find people for their next project, and if this hiring manager is seeing at least like playable prototype of what they are trying to build on that moment, that is the part that you are one zero ahead in the conversation. Like look at Ambika and Asta, right? Asta created uh, these social virtual exhibition environments inside the bootcamp and a company who are already building this see okay this this person is already ahead without us if this person joins us what will happen right and the same thing with ambika uh, she created a very interesting uh, car uh, configurator and showcase right and then now she's working uh, for jaguar land rover right so this is the exact thing so just and the, another thing is very interesting. We let you work on your own use case because in that way you can uh, combine your uh, subject matter expertise with XR prototyping skills together, right? You need to unleash this uh, combination of superpowers into your portfolio. So just imagine yourself what kind of project you want to do and then build that uh, in your portfolio. I mean, of course, through bootcamp, it is supervised, etc. But I'm talking also for people who just want to go through their self-learning, self-prototyping pathway, which is still, uh, I think you will still have quite a bit of chance as long as you commit enough. But just build the portfolio that you want to uh, be involved in the future. It will be challenging. You will be out of your comfort zone, but at the end, uh, it will find you, it will attract the people that you want to work with. Okay, we have to wrap up, I think in the next five minutes. I would love to get final comments, opinions, uh, questions. Feel free to chime in. Don't hesitate. Hey, Farhan, uh, real quick, I guess just for the boot camp, um, this, can you send me the the link um, for for that? Like the is it the, is the boot camp like the um, the foundations plus the prototyping? Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. I just shared again on the chat. Thank this you. is the bootcamp that will start in one week. 
So okay. uh, feel free to check the bootcamp. And we have actually a Discord server uh, for those who are not in. You can also find me there. I'm admin in this server, XR creator server, over 5,500 XR creators like you uh, joining to this server. And please feel free to um, reach me if you have any further questions. I mean, it doesn't matter if you are joining our programs or not. We want to still help you because the industry needs really talented people. And it looks like since you are in part of this conversation, it looks like you are really uh, already committed. That's a nice start. Sweet. Any other questions, comments before we wrap up? Uh, if not, I will ask one question. Would you like these kind of conversations roundtable to continue? Uh, maybe we can focus maybe on, on the product design or uh, other subject matter expertise areas, maybe engineering design or engineering and how you can combine with XR. So is it something that you you guys would love to join? Oh, Shall yeah. Shall we continue? Yep, for sure. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Yes, I, to... like, I, like the, I like the focus yeah. on, you know, tra transitioning, you know, the what they found effective in transitioning into XR um, career paths. That's great. Exactly, exactly. That's why we call it career navigator. So uh, we were already doing that actually one and a half years ago, but we give some we gave some break so uh, we can continue about that. And also design fellowship programs uh, also is perfect place that you can also find similar subject matter expertise on the design that you can uh, maybe exchange your uh, experience on that. Perfect. So I don't want to take so much of your time because some of you is even joining from the info session. So it's almost over two hours for them. Uh, so I'd love to connect with you afterwards and continue the discussion on Discord. Uh, we are here to support the community and you. So don't hesitate to ask any question to, uh, I mean, everyone gave their LinkedIn so feel free to reach them. And they are also on the XR Creator server, all our bootcamp students uh, and mentors. So even instead of me, ask them because they are the ones who have gone through uh, this uh, process and succeeded. So uh, feel free to reach out to them and to me if you have any further questions, happy to answer. So I'm really grateful for all the roundtable participants today. And of course, Alessio, uh, he had to drop off, but uh, I'm since this is a recorded, I would also want to thank one more time. Maybe he will watch again. Uh, and he has also a Everything Everywhere XR podcast um, that he shared his link uh, there. So I will also give a talk there, uh, I think in 10 days or so. So feel free to join his podcast as well. And thank you everyone, Asta, Jimmy, Steve, Emre, George, Kandepun, Schwank, everyone, Ambika, Onkar, Zahid. Thank you very much. Uh, let me share the link of the podcast. Uh, just give me one second. Uh, it is not there yet. It's not being announced yet, but I will share his podcast. There are many other uh, talks there. I think I will have a talk on Monday, 24th of July. So you can follow this. Thank you so much, Farhan. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Think, yeah, it means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Then it means that we will continue. If it is helpful, we will definitely continue. Great. Thank you, everyone. And have a very nice rest of the week. And hoping to see you in nice positions and projects on the XR world. Thank you, everyone. See you. Thank you.